are scientists the most unreliable profession? Recently, one of the world's biggest companies that publishes scientific papers from scientists all over the world has retracted almost 10,000 scientific papers because they are either almost certainly wrong or even fraudulent. 19 entire journals have been cancelled. Are they so rotten and corrupt? Now, this is an absolute disaster. 10,000 papers or pieces of work. Even the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, which is often very sycophantic to science institutions, says, Wiley's fake science scandal is just the latest chapter in a broader crisis of trust universities must address. Yep. And in my view, this is not even the biggest of the problems. That's only 10,000 papers or pieces of scientific work. Did you know that about half of the peer-reviewed research is likely to be wrong? Maybe even more in some areas. So now we're talking literally millions of individual pieces of, pa of work or papers. It's a staggering statistic which you may have difficulty accepting, but it's not disputed even in the top journals. Google it. If you don't believe me, it's called the replication crisis. Check out the work of people like John Ionides from Stanford University. And do you ever wonder about some of the research you see in the news? You know, scientists find that eating too many cucumber sandwiches causes cancer of the big toe. That type of stuff is roughly wrong about half the time. It's in good journals, it's peer-reviewed, it's not fraudulent, it's just very likely to be wrong. And when you dig into some of this stuff, or when other people do, you find that, you know, the effect was really small, and they only had a sample size of two toes, and they didn't even use a human, they used a three-toed sloth. Or, being more serious, how about the recent scandal on Alzheimer's research, which dates back to, you know, 2005, on beta amyloids, where it's now been found that the initial work was actually fraudulent, and has resulted in us wasting literally billions of dollars in follow-up research, scientists ended up chasing them down the rat hole, and it took them 15 years for them to realise it. In my view, that's a worse indictment than the original fraud. Did nobody check to see if the original work was right? Nope. Was their confirmation bias so strong that it took them... Hundreds of scientists, it took them so long to work out that they'd actually wasted a large part of their lives. Or remember when we were told that COVID vaccines would stop transmission of the disease, and even though it was obvious very early on that they would not, almost everybody who was vaccinated, including me, got the virus. Or when the science institutions were telling us there's no chance the virus came from the Wuhan virology lab, even though we now know it probably did, and the science institutions try to cover it up partially because, as we now know, the Chinese were actually messing around with the coronavirus, partly with American money, to make it more likely to affect humans. You can kind of see why they might have wanted to cover that up. And you get the feeling sometimes that scientists or the institutions are trying just a bit too hard to convince us of the impending doom of the world. You know, the Great Barrier Reef is almost finished, despite having record amounts of coral in the last few years, and that, what, sea levels are going to rise and drown Bangladesh. And these posh houses in Sydney, they should be worth nothing at all because they're going to get drowned. Ha, ah, this guy's trying to sell his house. Yeah, mate, I'll give you a hundred grand, and I'm robbing myself. Going to be underwater by the end of next week. So take it or leave it. <laughs> how dare you? Let's talk about housing, oh. Prime Minister. Well, you'll never believe it. They didn't take my offer. Maybe they don't believe in climate catastrophism. Gosh, they don't trust the science institutions. But you can sort of see why. What other profession gets it wrong half the time? Do accountants mess up the books half the time? Do surgeons take out the wrong kidney half the time? Do aircraft pilots crash the plane half the time? So you might be thinking, yes, scientists are the most untrustworthy professional. But I'm a scientist. We're good people. 
But the trouble is scientists are working in a totally broken system where there is severely inadequate quality assurance. Surgeons, surgeons would kill half their patients. They did in the 1800s um, if the systems around them were not working properly. So if the scalpel, scalpel wasn't cleaned properly, if the machine that was used to measure the blood pressure wasn't properly calibrated. Accountants would cook the books half the time if they knew that they would never be audited and never face a consequence if they did. And so it is with science, especially recently where scientists can only get to the top of the field by publishing lots of papers and the more spectacular the better. So there's little focus on quality. And just about the only system of quality assurance is this peer review. Now, the science institutions often call it the gold standard. And this is a real crime because they make you, the people think that peer review is when maybe a dozen other scientists really check over some piece of new work. They repeat all the experiments and redo out all the calculations. No. Peer review is actually literally just a quick check read by a couple of other scientists, maybe for just only a few hours. The experiments are never repeated. The calculations are almost never redone. Peer review is also done for free. And you get what you pay for. What other profession does not pay people to do the quality assurance? Can you just imagine Mr. Toyota or the Toyota Motor Company? Toyota has now decided we're not going to pay all our quality control people. Say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. So is it any wonder that much of the peer-reviewed work is dodgy and quite a bit of it actually fraudulent? So us scientists who have inherited the mantle of Newton and Einstein, Lister and Pasteur, these people who have given us so much, we're letting them down. And the reality is that the public is losing faith in the science institutions. A recent Rasmussen poll found that about 60% of Americans think that climate change has become a religion being used to control us. So they may well believe that climate change from humans is actually a problem, but they can also see that much of what comes out of the scientific institution is not trustworthy. It's quasi-religious in a way. They don't believe the science, and often they're right. But the trouble is that about half of the science that they hear probably is right, but there's no way to tell which half. What a terrible mess, and almost no effort is going in to fix it just yet.